about legalism. Uh, it's a lot. Uh, there's a lot of fighting in the Book of Galatians because um, you know we talk about fights in the church, the people not getting along, and that's okay because if you have a family, you probably have people that you don't get along with in your family. You know, and, but it has to be taken care of properly and with love. And two people who did not get along were Peter and Paul. Does everybody know that from studying the Bible? Peter and Paul, they, they didn't really like each other. And, and, and it's okay because Peter's, Peter was sent to work with the uh, Jews, and Paul was sent to work with the Gentiles. And they loved each other in the missions that they had to accomplish, but they didn't like how they accomplished each, uh, each thing. And it's kind of like in a church if you have the, the people that are the dreamers and the people that are the accountants. They may love each other, but they hate each other. Because the dreamers say, I want to do this. And the accountants say, well, there's no money to do this. And then the dreamers say, I hate you. And then some money comes in and the dreamers spend it real quick. And the accountants are the ones sick at night because there's no money in the bank. And they say, I hate you. And there's no war, but they really don't hate each other. They love each other. But anyway, that's what Galatians is about. But it's about that Jesus has freed us from legalism. But there are things in our lives that we have to do as Christians. And we call ourselves Christians, and I've talked to you before, I've been in sermon book before, that it's getting harder and harder and harder to call ourselves Christians. I found myself more calling myself a follower of Christ and a believer Christ because I don't like being associated with people of the Westboro Baptist personality. And, and, and I'm seeing more and more of that type of attitude in Christianity where we leave our Christianity behind and we become some kind of mutated American Christianity that really isn't anything of Jesus. And it's something that we want and desire, but it's not. And, and, it, and it's very Christianity very, very exciting to non-believers. And, and the thing is, is this new mutated Christianity is not. Because it comes with a lot of rules that people don't have. And so, we, as we see that, we, we realize that there is one true message. There's only one truth in life, and that is Jesus Christ. And, and today we're going to discuss that many find that message. That one message, but then many find that somewhere in their life, they doubt it. And we see it more and more in the church. We see more and more that people are doubting the things of Jesus. And, and, and we're seeing it in, uh, I, I told you, and I, it's such a hot topic right now. In these nuns, and it has nothing to the Catholic Church, in the in E.S., in, in the census, you have to you know, get the census and ask them what your faith is and all that kind of stuff. In any polls and census and everything, they're finding out that there are 56 million Americans that claim zero spirituality. They're not Buddhists. They're not Hindus. They're not Muslims. They're not Christians. They're not anything. And we went this further if you study that is the amount of them that say they were Christians. They were. They did go to Christian church. And they quit. And they won't go near it anymore. They won't have any part of it. And, and, and the thing is, why? Why is it like that? Why, why are these people out there? What happens to them that they can do that break of Jesus? Because it is a break. It is a, it is a, a, a stop in a relationship. We just went through relationships for five weeks in the month of May. And relationships are very important to us. And, and as you have any good relationship grows, I, I, I like to say that as my mom and dad, my mom and dad started out as parents. But by the time my mom and dad passed away, they were two of the best friends that I've ever had on the face of the earth. And, and there was that growth in that relationship. And, and it constantly went, and, and relationships grow like that. Friendships grow and grow. And, and I, I, I called a guy this week. I have, I have my best friend from high school. I, I tell you guys about him every once in a while. I found him. He lives in Lancaster. And it is just 
just amazing. His life gets busy, my life gets busy. We can go three months without talking. And we get on the phone and, and, and bam, it just picks right back up. And we're right there. And, and, and it's so cool because it's evolved now to where he, he talks to me about things he needs prayer for, things that he's praying for me about. And, and, and it has grown into that. And, and relationships grow. And we talked last last and last week about a relationship with Jesus, but people are losing that relationship with Jesus. And we need to learn how can we stay focused? How can we stay focused in our relationship with Jesus to keep that strong? Because it can be a tough thing because we don't see Jesus anymore, right? He's not there, not going to the door. He's not coming in and say, hey, let's go to dinner Friday night. It's not that kind of relationship. He's, he's not going to like what you do on Facebook. He's not going to He's not going to send you a tax or be on Twitter. You know, it, 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 it's a relationship that Jesus has done all of his work and he continues to work for us. But it requires us to do work and we, we get away from him. And, and the reason it is is because the Bible says that we're to make Christ the center of our focus, that we're to be centered on Christ. You know, it's very unpopular that Jesus said that he is to be our top. Priority. I mean, and when I said this a lot last month, Jesus said that he's become to come before your husband, your wife, your kids, your mom, your dad, your friends, everybody. Jesus is to come first. And what has happened is, is that that has gone. You're, you're just really not a good person if you put Jesus first. Can you imagine, moms, if you put Jesus before your kids, what other moms would say about you? You know, having this big thing at the school, and we need something in the middle. I can't do that. Can't do it. I can't. Because I'm going to tell you, I'm teaching my kids how important worship is. And how important it is to be with other people. And how, what would people in there with all those poor kids? Their moms were the religious fanatics, and they would grow up just like that. But you know what? You find out that what's called the religious fanatics, they go to church too. And they've redirected their, redirected their focus on Christ. They've, they've changed. That he's not the center. Other things have come in and become the center. And, and, and what it does is that we can actually feel ourselves that if Jesus is right here, we can feel ourselves walking this way and walking away from him. And one of the true blessings is, is that Jesus follows us. It says in Romans 1 that God will let you walk away, but Jesus continues to follow us. It's be there, ready for that minute that we turn around, but too many people aren't turning around. And that's what we're going to talk about today. The true message and what we need to look at and, and, and to stay with Jesus. And before we do, let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, we'll come to you today. Just so thankful for the blessings you pour out on us. And thank you for another day of life to serve you. And I thank you for our relationship with you. Because it is truly wonderful to be able to talk with you and walk with you and, and hear what you have to say to us reading your word, to come to you with prayer, and to feel your presence and to do things for you. And Lord, I just ask that you would be with us today and help us as we hear your word to become stronger and more focused on you and to put you first and make that a priority in our lives. And we ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It, it is shocking. It is shocking to watch people walk away from Christ. And, and people do walk away from Christ. They leave. Uh, sometimes you'll see it on Facebook. I, I've attended the last few years. That's where I've seen it the most. That I've seen people who I knew at some point that were devout Christians, but now they're actually bad enough faith. And they'll say, well, you know, you'll see something that comes up. Because I'm going to tell you something. And, and you may not like this, but this is from Jesus Christ. It's not from me. All faiths are not going to heaven. Now, you have the opportunity to believe that. You can believe that all faiths are going to heaven. You can get up tomorrow morning and you can believe that with everything that you are. You can believe that the Muslims are going to heaven. You can believe that the Hindus are going to heaven. You can believe that the Buddhists are going to heaven. You have the right to do that. You are not a Christian. If you believe that everybody is going to heaven, you are not a follower of Jesus Christ. And, and, and I'll be quite honest with you. The people who are Jews, who are not Jews, because Christians are Jews, and 
I can explain that to you for 10 hours and then just make your head spin. Okay? But the people who call themselves the Jews, that don't believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, and call themselves God's people, will never see the kingdom of heaven because they refuse to believe in Jesus Christ. Because the scriptures clearly say that Jesus is the fulfillment of the promise of God. He is the Messiah who came to die for each person's sins. He rose again in three days. And because of his sacrifice, anyone who believes on him will be saved. And then the man himself said, I am the only one. And that's what each of his believers believe. And that is falling off like a can't believe. There's a bumper sticker that you see. You see it in church parking lots that says coexist. Have you seen it? And it's spelled out with all the different symbols from all the different faiths. And this, this car is parked in Christian church parking lots. I'm not talking about Church of Christ. I'm talking about Methodist church, Baptist churches. And, and, and you know what? And, and you talk to it, it's mainly college kids that start this. Sorry, college kids, because there's college kids that stay strong. But in college, we, we, we get really hit to turn away from this. And, and when people go to that, they just come and believe Jesus. And as they believe that, you watch them fall further and further away. They don't pray, they don't read their Bibles. Jesus becomes less and less important, less and less of a thought. And, and they, they don't even go there. And then one day, you'll find out that they just quit believing. And it's really good to go to a funeral. You go to a funeral, everybody believes in a funeral. You know that? I mean, the weirdest beliefs you ever heard. It's a sunny day today because Uncle Bill made the sunshine. My mom and dad are in the kingdom of heaven as long as they have other people. They have no ability to control them. Zero. All right? <coughs> Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you this, and I get in trouble for this all the time. My mom and dad have no idea what's going on in my life. Do you praise God for that? My mom and dad are in the kingdom of heaven. They're in their eternal reward. Why do I want them worrying that my leukemia is back? I already got the lecture on how I spoiled Hawaii. I don't want to hear that I spoiled heaven. When I had leukemia the first time, mom and dad paid it. A year in advance to go to Hawaii, and I made her go. When she got back, I said, See, I lived. I told you to go. Did you have fun? No. <laughs> <laughs> but people just quit believing. And Paul addresses this in the first chapter of Galatians, verse 6 to 10. He says, I am shocked that you have so quickly turned from God, who, you cho who chose you because of his wonderful kindness. You have believed another message. When there really is only one true message. But some people are causing you trouble and want to make you turn away from the good news about Christ. I pray that God will punish anyone who preaches anything different from our message to you. It doesn't matter if that person is one of us or an angel from heaven. I've said it before and I will say it again. I hope God will punish anyone who preaches anything different from what you already believe. I am not trying to please people. I want to please God. Do you think I'm trying to please people? If I were doing that, I would not be a servant of Christ. I, I, I tell you, I, I have that all over. Uh, and I think every minister does. I'm not trying to please people. I want to please God. Do you think I'm trying to please people? If I were doing that, I would not be a servant of Christ. Two things that we see here that are two of the main reasons that people change. We're going to get into it a little deeper after this, but two main reasons. Number one, they hear a different message. I've said this to you many times but over the years, and I still think it's important to talk about the high school kids going to college. And Nathan went to Ohio State. And it's the Ohio State University. And everybody knows that Jesus is the head of Ohio State. Amen? And Satan's the head of Michigan. <laughs> we all know that, right? And my son goes to Ohio State University and I'm as proud as anything. My first one goes to Ohio State. He walks in his biology class on the first day. The guy looks up and says, And do you know there are idiots out there who are taking people to the creation and in a four or five hundred seat lecture hall, my 
son Nathan stands up and says, excuse me, my dad takes buses of people to the Creation Museum. He would never call them an idiot. And he said some people clapped in the class. You know, and, and that's what happens. You go out and instantly you're in the world and people are teaching you different messages. You know what? Maybe the world wasn't created in the six days. And you know what? Maybe this miracle didn't happen. You know what? Maybe the, the, when they walked across the Red Sea, maybe Moses met a shallow and kind of walked through a swamp. Anybody ever heard that before? And then, you know, Jesus wasn't really dead. He was just hurt real bad. And they snuck him out the back of the cave and moved to France. And Tom Hanks did a job. You know, people hear these things and, and they believe. And they fall into it. And they start following a different message than the true message of Jesus. And then number two, they want to please people. It is tough in 2015 America to be a Christian and not offend people. Because you offend the people who aren't Christians, and then you remember the, the Christian people I talked about before? You kind of offend me, they're using the name Christian. You offend them. So like you're in this middle ground. You know, the, the, the real super, what I call, I like to call them churchy people, because they're not Christians, they're churchy. They've invented some religious thing that has nothing to do with God's word. And they, they go out there and they live in that, and they offend Christians, and they, they turn people away from God because of the things that they like to put in that they believe. So you, you offend them, and then you offend the non-believers, and it's a middle ground. And sometimes, to be honest with you, you just get tired of everybody being mad at each other. Amen? It just gets old. You just get tired of it. The, the, the original Christians, the original Christians in Jerusalem, as soon as their employers found out, they fired them. Because they were afraid that the temple would. They, they, they knew. They knew what it was like to be ostracized. They didn't get invited to the meals that they got invited to for. They didn't get invited to parties. They didn't get invited to weddings. And so you know what they started doing? They started turning from the faith. And it started happening in every town where they went in. And they made great differences. And people gave their life to Christ. The people would lose the chance to be social. They would lose the chance to be with people. And it started getting on their nerves and hurting their feelings. So they abandoned the faith because you know what? It's a whole lot easier just to be a Jew. And it's a whole lot easier to follow up with Nicola, who was a local guy. It was a lot easier to do that because everybody else was into it. It was easy to please people. And we see that today. It's the cruel thing to do to, to be all these things and to not be this. And it's more intelligent because if you're stuck in this and you believe this, it shows you kind of stupid and uneducated. But the Apostle Paul tells us that in this, and it's the truth of God, we must stay strong. We must stay strong. So I told you, we're going to delve into this a little deeper. So why do people walk away from Jesus? Why, why how do people end that relationship? You know, because if you look at it, and especially in our faith and what we believe. I mean, you come forward in front of a lot of people and, and you turn around to everybody and you say, I'm giving my life to Jesus Christ. And you make that announcement and everybody kind of claps and hugs you. Then you go up and you get baptized in front of everybody. So you know what? You let an entire congregation of people see what you look like with your hair wet. And you go through this for Jesus, and, and, and it's kind of different, and it's, and, and it's kind of bizarre to some people. And, and you come and you do this, and, and a lot of the baptism, especially, is to show the old me has died, the new me has risen, I'm going to follow him, I'm him, I'm a preacher in him. He lives in me, I've changed, I'm a new thing. And, and we believe that, and we follow that, but you know what? People just stop. How can somebody just stop? And, and I'm going to give you a, a list of, of some reasons today that people just stop. And the number one reason 
that people walk away and stop. And, and I am going to tell you, we're going to go through a lot of Hebrews here because Hebrews is, is a book where it's really directed towards people who just quit. And in Hebrews, uh, it, the first one is, is they just forget who he is. They just forget who Jesus is. They don't think about it. It becomes very routine. It becomes very mundane. So many things in life are more important than Jesus. That it's amazing the people that are that are followers of Christ that can tell you statistics in football, baseball, how to bake this, or you know what how many miles a gallon this car gets compared to this car. And you ask them something about Jesus, but they don't have a clue. They don't know. And and. It, it's really a, a tough thing. It, it's really, you know, how, how do people get that way? And, and the thing is, is they're just in a busy world. They forget who he is. Hebrews 1, 1 through 4 says, Long ago, in many ways, and many times, God's prophet spoke his message to our ancestors. But now, at last, God sent his son to bring his message to us. God created the universe by his son. And everything someday belonged to his son. God's son has all the brightness of God's own glory and is like him in every way. By his own mighty word, he holds the universe together. After the Son had washed away our sins, he sat down at the right side of the glorious God in heaven. He had become much greater than the angels, and the name he was given is far greater than any of theirs. You know, Jesus, he is our creator. How can you forget who your creator is? You know, I mean, he's kind of nuts, isn't he? He made me. Kind of goes with my dad. My dad said, I'm going to eat you, but I can take you out. <laughs> Never forgot that. Okay? And I think he got it from Bill Cosby, to be quite honest. <laughs> but the thing of it is, is it's, it's very true. Our Creator made us. He takes out the time He wants. He can bless us, He can take away. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away. He, he can do any of those. We, we live that knowing each day. It is our desire to please our Creator. That's what anything does. Anything that's alive will try to work to please its creator, except for humans. And they'll find out their creator, and they'll deny him and try to find a different thing. But we actually forget who our creator is. The number two, or the number two thing that happens, and, and you see a lot of people, is we really get feeling good about ourselves sometimes. We really like to think that we're special, and we forget that we need saved. From all, what do I need saved from? We don't even think we're sinners. We start thinking we're really good people. We're really good by God. We're Americans. We're good. Hey, man. Just by being born in the state of Ohio, I'm good. You know? That's against everything that Jesus said. We're all born sinners. We're all born in need with the need for a Savior. Every single person, and yet, we lose that thought process. Hebrews 2, 1 through 3. We must give our full attention to what we were told so that we won't drift away. The message spoken by angels proved to be true, and all who disobeyed or rejected it were punished as they deserved. So if we refuse this great way of being saved, how can we hope to escape? The Lord himself was the first to tell about it. The people heard the message proved to us that it was true. All who disobeyed or rejected or were punished as they deserved. I, I've got to be honest with you. I love to read and I love to find ministers who do an incredible job of translating the scripture. And, and I'm reading this guy named Rob Bell. And his stuff is just groundbreaking and beautiful. And it's fantastic. And then all of a sudden, one day, he decides that he wants to work for Oprah. And go be the, the minister of the stars. And so do you know how he does that? He comes out and says, there is no hell. And he writes a book that says there is no hell. The Christian church, it walks away from the book. And, and unfortunately, too many ministers walked away from Rob and quit praying for him. Now he's a television show on over TV. You can watch it anytime you want. Don't watch it. Because he's trying to tickle your ears with what he will say so that he can make money. But he has forgotten. And you know what? If he, if he destroys 
fell, and people listened to him because his first books were awesome. They were fantastic. They were spot on. They were right on with the words of God. So some people began to follow him. So all of a sudden, they're following this guy, and he looks up and says, there is no hell. If there is no hell, what do you need to be saved from? Nothing. People believe that. And they walk away from Jesus. But you know what? The fact that we need a Savior is the Word of God. It is not invented by man. It comes from God Himself, who is the Creator. We need saved. Number three, the reason people walk away from Jesus is they don't mature. They don't mature. Their lives from the time that they give their life to Christ, you know, that first week or two, they might read their Bible a little bit, and all of a sudden they can't remember where their Bible is. <coughs> they don't pray. You know, worship becomes something like, if I get time, I'll be there. You know, and, and, and they just get away from all the things that are of God. And, and they don't grow, and they don't get strong. Hebrews 5, 12 through 14 says, by now you should have been teachers. But once again, you need to be taught the simplest things about what you have said. You need milk instead of solid food. People who live on milk are like babies who really don't know what is right. Solid food is for mature people who have been trained to know right from wrong. So what happens is, is that we get in this argument. We get in these arguments in the church. What is right? What is wrong? You know what? If you know the Word of God, there is no argument. There's no debate. You know, I, I, I want to tell you, I ask a question all the time. How did racism ever get in the church? Ever. How did Christians ever have any part of, a, of being racist? I want to ask you something. How did Christians ever, and you go back in time so you can see this not a new phenomenon, how did pre Christians ever buy another human to work for them, separate their families, and beat them with whips? How did Christians ever move into a land and shoot people to take their land? Right? So it's not a new phenomenon. Christians have been, people say that Christians have not matured, matured. They have not known the Word of God. They have not studied the Word of God. They have not sought that closer relationship with Him. That when they do that, there's not going to be an end to that relationship. They're not going to walk away. They're going to stay close to Him. Number four. Turn the page. Take a drink. Well, I'm getting good at this. They get beat down. They get beat down. I, 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 I got to be honest with you. Since the leukemia came back, I thought about resigning from the ministry about 32 times. Because I just don't want to mess with them. I get tired of them. I get tired of, of people how, 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 who I'm represented with, who I, I'm associated with. That say they're Christians. And I think I could do better than reaching people for Christ working in a factory where I was only one. Where I'd have to count on how everybody else acted. And, and you know, and, and the thing is, is that's how people do. They don't want to be associated with the church. They don't want to be associated with these things because it's not really how Jesus is. And then they're getting persecuted for their beliefs all the time. In Hebrews 10, 35 and 39, says, Keep on being brave. It will bring you great rewards. Learn to be patient so that you will please God and be given what He has promised. As the scriptures say, God is coming soon. It won't be very long. The people God accepts will live because of their faith. But He isn't pleased with anyone who turns back. We are not like those people who turn back and get destroyed. We will keep on having faith until we are saved. We know we're saved until He actually comes and takes us from sin. God is pleased when we persevere. It's hard sometimes. It's really hard. It really is. It really gets tough sometimes. But you know what? You have to think who you're doing it for. 
I mean, you got two different schools of thoughts. Number one is as rewards. Number two, one of my favorite stories is that I always read about a bunch of guys that walk away from the ministry and they decided to go fishing. And I hope everybody understands that in John 20, 21, you're not talking about a fishing trip where they just went for a day. They decided to quit the ministry and go back to work as fishermen. And they went out there, and when they quit working for Jesus, when he did one or two, can anybody remember what happened? They caught no fish. 